Good morning. My name is Celia Conway, and as a member of our church, I am happy to welcome you to Millwoods United Church. This morning, some of us are in person, and some of us are participating live on Facebook. Each Sunday, we gather to share and celebrate, to discuss our sacred values, and to confront the mysteries of life and love. We welcome you regardless of your, bi I'm sorry, of belief, sexual orientation, gender identity, or cultural background. As an affirming congregation, we work to make the church a place where all of us feel safe. We acknowledge the land. This building on the southeast Edmonton is on the tr traditional land treaty f six First Nations. Wherever we find ourselves this morning, I hope we will think of the people who have cared for this land over thousands of years. All of us are treaty people, we are, which we give thanks. Glad we're gathered here today. Each day at this church, please join in, reach out, and make a difference. So at this time, I would like to anybody who has announcements to please come forward and uh, have at it. Good morning, everyone. My name is Carol Hickman. I have one announcement. Um, next Sunday, a congregational meeting will be held beginning at 10.30 in the church sanctuary to hear and hopefully approve the recommendation of the ministerial search team. This meeting will begin with worship led by your ministerial search team and will lead into the congregational meeting. Everyone who is part of our church community is invited to attend. The worship service and meeting will be in building only and will not be live streamed. If it's impossible for you to attend next week, please, but you would like to participate, please contact Rob McPhee um, or myself after the service today, and we'll give you a Zoom link to the service and meeting. The information shared next week will run in What's the Buzz for the following two weeks. We hope you'll be able to join us next Sunday at 10.30 for worship, a meeting, and then the church picnic on the lawn. Any questions, please contact Rob or myself. And I, being the party person, I'm going to remind you about the picnic. Um, you need to bring something for yourself to eat, like a sandwich or an entire turkey, or whatever it is you choose, and then something to share. It can be as simple as a bag of chips, or a complicated potato salad, or deviled eggs. Not that I'm assigning anything. So that's something for yourself, something to share, and a lawn chair because we're not, there's the, uh, the Zimbabwean congregation comes in here after us and we are going out there and can't take the chairs. We'll have to have our own. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Wendy McNutt, and I am speaking to you today about the celebration, the National Indigenous Peoples Day, which actually has become a week and even extended beyond that to a month. So there's all sorts of things that you can do. I'm just giving you a quick rundown of things that are happening in the next three days. Um, there is a festival at Sir Winston Churchill Park um, this afternoon. The grand entry is at 12, and if you've never been to a powwow or seen a grand entry, it's, uh, it's something that just moves right into your chest and, and stays there with you. There's also a kickoff at the Orange Hub in the West End, and it's um, all sorts of performers that are, are in that area, vendors, dancing, drumming, and that sort of thing as well. Um, the first event is free. That's the one at Winston Churchill. The second one is $30 a person. It's a fundraiser. On Monday, the City of Edmonton is sponsoring uh, an event at street level on the west side of Edmonton City Centre. And there's performances, dancers, singers, 
There's elder storytelling, there's some crafts, and there's free bannock and jam. And that's worth going for all by itself. The Bent Arrow Society is also having an event on Monday, and it is between 10 and 1 in the Parkdale School Playground. And it sounds like it's just going to be really a good sampling of everything that um, National Indigenous Peoples Day should be. There's smudge and prayer, cultural teachings, powwow dancing, traditional singing, crafts, vendors, traditional games, which I loved learning, drumming, and then there's a hot dog lunch. So free for all ages. Um, take your lawn chairs because we know it's damp. And then Tuesday, there's a live stream at 10 a.m. with Lance Cardinal and it is on the website that I will post at the back. And then the Art Gallery of Edmonton, oh, I'm sorry, the Art Gallery of Alberta is also having a free event um, demonstrating the um, exhibits, the talents of our Indigenous peoples, and then some programs that are there, as well as uh, our newly released movie called Beans, and it's about the Mohawk standoff in Ontario from the perspective of a child. So those are just a few things to look at. Oh, one more thing. June 25th, there is uh, fibers, indigenous um, teachings about how to use natural fibers in weavings and that sort of thing at Fort Edmonton Park, and I thought, ooh, I bet there's some ladies that might be interested in that. Of course, the men might as well. You're welcome to go, too. And um, just register for that event at Fort Edmonton. And the art gallery, you must uh, purchase your free tickets. You have to reserve your spot. So that's all I have for you this morning. Thank you. Uh, for the announcements also, if you wanted to be, have mentioned them in next week's uh, service, you can also send in the information to Liliana um, and it'll be posted in the bulletin. So now we welcome Anita Pivak and we will be leading the service today. Thank you, Celia. Can everyone hear me? Good morning, and a very special welcome to all our fathers that are here today. Happy Father's Day. The order of service might be slightly different than you're used to, but just follow along on the screen or in the bulletin. You may have found some papers and pencils on your chairs. We're going to use them later in the service. Or you can use them to doodle on, because I know I do most of my good thinking when I'm doodling. So, We walked into church today needing you in different ways, God. Some of us need strength because we are facing a big challenge. Some of us need hope because we feel like giving up. Some of us need love because we are feeling alone. We trust that you will provide for us, whether through words or music, or in a quiet moment of reflection. You are here, you are with us. Let's begin our worship service with lighting the Christ candle. And while Celia is doing that, we'll sing from Voices United uh, 21, Open Our Hearts. Jesus, that whenever two or three are gathered in your name, you are there. We light this candle to remind ourselves and to celebrate your constant presence. May we always seek your guiding life 
light in our lives. Please join me in a gathering prayer. It is good to be together, God, in this place, with these people at this time, listening for your voice. In this hour of worship, tell us about your kingdom of kindness so we can seek it. Show us justice. We want to walk with you humbly, closely, daily. Amen. Our opening in this morning is from More Voices, uh, number 28, God of the Bible. children's story this morning and I see there's no children but I think we're all still really young at heart so I'm going to read it anyways so 
take part if you can, okay? So the story I'm going to read today is called The Invisible String. It's written by Patrice Karsh, Karst. So today, in church today, we're going to hear a lot about parables. And I was going to ask the children, do you know what a parable is? And I think most of us know. But I was going to say to them, a parable is a made-up story that is meant to teach us something. It takes something that's unclear and makes it easier for us to understand. Jesus told many parables in the Bible. So the story I'm going to tell you today is not from the Bible, and it's not really a parable, but it does teach us something really important. So I'm going to read it from up here. I won't go to the chair. Lisa and Jeremy, the twins, were asleep one calm and quiet night. Suddenly it began to rain very hard. Thunder rumbled until it got so loud that it woke them up. Mommy, mommy, they cried out as they ran to her. Don't worry, you two. It's just the storm making all that noise. Go back to bed. We want to stay close to you, said Jeremy. We're scared. Mom said, you know, we're always together, no matter what. But how can we be together when you're out here and we're in bed, said Lisa. Mom held something right up in front of them and said, this is how. Rubbing their sleepy eyes, the twins came closer to see what Mom was holding. I was about your age when my mommy first told me about the invisible string. I don't see a string, said Jeremy. You don't need to see the invisible string. People who love each other are always connected by a very special string made of love. But if you can't see it, how do you know it's there, asked Lisa. Even though you can't see it with your eyes, you can feel it with your heart. And, that is, uh, that, and know that you are always connected to everyone you love. When you're at school and you miss me, your love travels all the way along the string until I feel it tug on my heart. And when you tug it back, we feel it in our hearts, said Jeremy. Does Jasper the cat have an invisible string, Lisa asked. She sure does, said Mom. And best friends like me and Lucy, asked Lisa. Best friends too. How far can the string reach? Anywhere and everywhere, Mom said. Would it reach me even if I were a submarine captain deep in the ocean, asked Jeremy. Yes, Mom said, even there. Or a mountain climber, even there. A ballerina in France, even there. A jungle explorer, even there. How about an astronaut out in space? Yes, even there. Then Jeremy quietly asked, can my string reach all the way to Uncle Brian in heaven? Yes, even there. Does the string go away when you're mad at us? Never, said Mom. Love is stronger than anger, and as long as love is in your heart, the string will always be there. Even when you get older and can't agree about things like what movies to see, or who gets to ride in the front seat? Or what time to go to bed? Oh, that's right, you two should be in bed. And with that, they all laughed as Mom chased the twins back to their beds. Within a few minutes, they were asleep, even though the storm was still making the same loud noises outside. As they slept, they started dreaming of all the invisible strings they have and all the strings their friends have and their friends have, and their friends have, until everyone in the world was connected by invisible spring, strings. And from deep inside, they now could clearly see no one is ever alone. And I was going to end by saying, I think that Jesus would really have loved this story, because it teaches that us that we are never alone. We are always connected to the love of our family and friends, just like we are always connected to God's love.
I hope you enjoyed that. Yeah. And now we're going to, um, I was going to ask the kids to come and sing a ch uh, children's song with us, and it's um, Like a Rock, and I think there's actions to it. Do you know them? No. <laughs> <laughs> I can... Oh, okay. I do know the first one's this. <laughs> oh, down. oh palms down. I'm sorry. Well, let's sing it anyways. Thank you. <laughs> Barb, do you know them? You do it. Turn around. Turn around. is going to come up to read the two readings after we're going to listen to a music a special music by Brian and Lynn. Let us pray. May our hearts and minds be open so that we listen to the words of ancient scripture. We might find wisdom for our living today. Amen. This is from Luke uh, 10, 25 to 37. An expert on law stood up to put Jesus to the test and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit everlasting life? Jesus answered, What is written in the law? How do you read it? The expert on the law replied, You must love the Most High God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said, you have answered correctly to do this and you'll live. By the expert on law seeking self-justification, pressed Jesus further, and just who is my neighbor? <clears throat> Jesus replied, there was a traveler going down from Jerusalem to Jericho who fell prey to robbers. The traveler was beaten, stripped naked, and left half dead. A priest happened to be down the same road. The priest saw the traveler lying beside the road and passed on the other side. Likewise, there was a levite who came the same way. This one too saw the afflicted traveler and passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan who was taking the same road also came upon the traveler and filled with compassion, approached the traveler and dressed his wounds corn and oil and wine. Then the Samaritan put the wounded person on a donkey and went straight to the inn and there cared for the injured one. The next day, the Samaritan took out two silver pieces and gave them to the innkeeper with re request. Look after this person, and if there is any further expense, I will repay you on the way back. Which of the three, in your opinion, was the neighbor to the traveler who fell ill to the robbers? The answer came, the one who showed compassion. Jesus replied, then go and do the same. This is now uh, Luke 15, three to seven. Jesus then addressed this parable to, the, to them. Who among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, doesn't leave the 99 in open, chas sorry, open pasture and search for the lost one until it is found? And finding it, you put the sheep on your shoulders in jubilation. Once home, you invite your friends and neighbors and say to them, Rejoice with me. I found my lost sheep. I tell you in the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over repentant sinner than over 99 righteous people who have need to repent. 
Hear what the Spirit is saying to you this morning. May I be blessed with understanding. All the diamonds in this world that mean anything to me are conjured up by wind and sunlight sparkling on the sea. Thank you. That was beautiful. That was worth coming to church for. Jesus was a storyteller. The stories he told were called parables. Jesus told these stories or parables to illustrate a moral or a spiritual lesson. These seemingly simple and memorable stories often with imagery, all teach a lesson in our daily lives. The point of a parable is to take something unclear and make it clear. This morning, we listened to two of the many, almost 40 parables of Jesus. We were all very familiar with the first one, the Good Samaritan found in Luke's Gospel. Jesus used this parable of the Good Samaritan as an example of loving those who may not be our friends. Jesus taught his followers to love your neighbors as yourself. Jesus was asked to confirm what he meant by the, na- by the word neighbor. This is when he told the parable of the Good Samaritan. 
to explain that people should love everyone, including their enemies. It's easy to love your family and friends, but it is more difficult to love those who you may not get along with or even those who may harm or hurt you. To show love to your enemies is to truly love as Christ did. By stopping to help the hurt man, the Samaritan showed the kind of love we are all called to show. When we reach out in love and kindness to those the world tells us to hate, we show our love for Jesus. Our second reading, the parable of the lost sheep, this is one of the most beloved stories in the Bible, a favorite for Sunday school classes because of its simplicity. It is found in both Matthew and Luke. We all know the story well. A shepherd has a hundred sheep and one is lost. The shepherd leaves the 99 and seeks out the lost one. This parable displays the beautiful meaning of God, like the good shepherd, seeking out the lost one and rejoicing when they are found. So, do these parables still speak to us today? All the images and illustrations Jesus used were familiar to the people he was telling the stories to, items and events within their world, images that may not relate to today's society. Many years ago, I purchased a book called Everyday Parables, written by James Taylor. In it, he tells this story. The first time we took our daughter to Ireland, she looked out of the car window on a dreary day when the rain slooshed horizontally across emerald green fields and asked, Dad, what are those fuzzy looking rocks out there? Just then, one of the rocks got up and shook itself. They're sheep, I explained. She went into fits of laughter. I never did find out what she expected sheep to look like, but it certainly wasn't fuzzy rocks. In that brief exchange, though, I realized how meaningless a central image of the Bible must be to her. If she didn't know anything about sheep, how was she to understand Jesus' parable about sheep? How could she comprehend, the Lord is my shepherd? At my age, I can still re remember enough of the former world that the stories of the Bible mean something to me. But how much can a person born into the computer age, a teenager who has never known a time before smartphones and the internet, how much can these newcomers have in common with a community of people who express their faith most, mostly in meaningless images of long ago times? Taylor writes, the problem is not that the story of God, the message of Jesus, is out of date. The problem is that we Christians have been content to express it in outdated images and metaphors. We've been content to let someone else, a few years or a few centuries ago, do our theological reflections for us. He continues, so over the last few years, I have led workshops in which I ask people to create their own parables around everyday things. You take some familiar object something you've never thought of as having any religious significance, and you analyze it. What's it made of? What's it used for? How does it work? You list these qualities without worrying about how important they are or whether they're religious qualities. Then you compare them to your faith, or with God, or with the church, or the Bible and suddenly you are making connections that you never thought were there. If you start telling stories that include God in our daily word, world, you have to start with the apparently insignificant stuff, the local stuff, the everyday stuff that's so common that we overlook it. Jesus did not build his parables on what one head of state said to another head of state. He talked about ordinary, everyday things. In them, he found evidence of the nature and purpose of God, and so must we. This book, of collection of, this book is a collection of parables that he has written with many different groups of people and with many different things, such as potato peelers, combs, door hinges, shoelaces, sliced bread, etc. And I'm going to read you just a couple just to give you an idea. The first one is called Jigsaw Puzzles. 
When you first dump a jigsaw puzzle onto a table, it looks like a hopeless mess. At first glance, nothing matches. Nothing fits together. And the bigger the puzzle, the more hopeless the task seems. The Bible is like a jigsaw puzzle with an infinite number of pieces. It has 66 books, assembled by unknown numbers of writers and editors. Each book has hundreds of messages. When you first dump open the Bible to see what you've got, it looks like a hopeless mess. All those bits and pieces don't seem to match with other bits and pieces. Initially, you try to make sense out of a verse here and a verse there, like trying to find a corner or an edge in a jigsaw puzzle. But once you start putting pieces together, it starts to make more sense. And the more pieces you put together, the better it looks. And the other one I'm going to read to you is called River. The river's clear water ran in a course over rounded rocks. It occurred to me as I drove along beside the river that I have never seen an ugly river. Every river left to itself is beautiful, whether it's a black canyon with raging water or a muddy stream meandering across an ancient lake bottom. Rivers only become ugly when we destroy them with warehouses and industries crowded along the bank, with toxins dumped into their waters, with debris carried by the current. Every river is different. No two rivers ever follow the same watershed, the same valley. They all rise in their unique source and all follow their unique, unique routes to the sea. They're rather like us that way. Each of our lives is unique. No two of us ever live exactly the same journey, the same experiences. Yet, despite the uniqueness, we all flow to the same sea. The ancient Hebrews thought of the ocean as death because it was too salty to drink or to use for irrigation. In a sense, the ocean is the death of every river. Yet, the ocean is not deadly. We now know it, is, it was the womb of life, the place where life began. It is still the world's most prolific source of living creatures. There are many rivers, but only one ocean. We, all, we call the oceans by various names, but they are all connected. They are all at sea level. We are like rivers. Perhaps the ocean is like God. Universal, endless, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. And perhaps when we die, our individual rivers are all welcomed back into God's universal womb of life. So now, you remember those pieces of paper and pencils? I invite you to gather in groups of two or three and maybe try to um, write a short parable about an everyday object or place. I'll give you about five minutes. Um, have fun with this, see what you can come up with, and maybe later you would like to share it. Otherwise, I will share my parable. So let's give you about five minutes. I have more paper if you need more paper.
ใช่Thank you. Okay, everyone. I hope you're almost finished. We've got to keep moving forward. So, does anyone have a quick little parable that they wrote that they'd like to share? Don't feel you have to, but it's just a fun little exercise how we can write a parable about everyday, ordinary things. Anyone? There's a, there's a we talked about a candle um, and the warmth that it brings. Uh, and you won't perish if you light one in a car in the middle of winter. <laughs> it offers light through darkness. Uh, by collecting the melted wax, you can produce another candle, so it's ever giving. And a candle scent can purify the air and bring back memories of life circumstances. Wonderful. <laughs> Anyone else? Oh. Wow. I love the, I love the response. Well, we were talking about uh, recipes. And if you think of baking and you change one or two ingredients, you get a completely different uh, result. And then we sort of changed the recipes and we started talking about smelting metals together and getting different results. And if you have, I think it's tin and copper, which are both soft metals, but you mix them together and you get a hard metal, bronze. And whether it's food or metals or personalities in a group or whatever, if you change one or two ingredients, you get a completely different uh, end product. So th that didn't really come out as a parable, but it, that was where it was going to. That was where it was going to <laughs> eventually get. Thanks. There's someone back there again. Okay, so we didn't think we really understood this, but we talked about mosquitoes, because I have a lot of mosquito bites right now. And I said, you know, like everything in this earth, or on the, in this world, has been put here for a purpose, except for mosquitoes. <laughs> Their purpose is only to irritate us, but they actually do have a purpose. They feed birds, they feed dragonflies, and so I guess everything does have a purpose in this world. Thank you. Actually, John brought this up. He said, the roots of a tree grow and support the strength of a tree which uh, is the way that families uh, get together, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote it, so I better know what it says, right? Yeah. yeah, just the roots of a tree expand and grow, and as they grow and expand, the tree becomes stronger and branches out. It uh, survives the wind and storms and all the difficulties of life, and it, uh, through that adversity, becomes a stronger tree. I was shocked when you said potato peeler because as I'm sitting here thinking of my parable, that's what I chose was a potato peeler. And we're all, all kind of like vegetables. We're the vegetables of life. Some of us are root vegetables and some of us are fruits, but we're all important. And the Lord is like a potato peeler. He doesn't see the rough edges. He doesn't see the rotten spots. He leaves us all clean and shining and new like his own image. And even the scrapings that come off, when we do that for ourselves, when we dig deeper and we try to find the image of, of God within ourselves, even the bits that come off, 
are recycled and composted and, and good things can grow from them. Thank you. My parable is called geese. A couple of weeks ago, I saw a flock of geese flying overhead in their characteristic V formation. One goose, one goose led the way and all the others followed. Perhaps that is God leading and guiding us, showing us the way. After a short time, though, that lead goose fell back, allowing another goose to lead. It did not leave the flock, but still kept flying close. Is this like God allowing you or me to lead, to choose our own way, but always, still always staying with us? We know that if we get lost or tired or weak, that God is always with us, always beside us, and always behind us. And if needed, he will once again come and show us the way. Amen. Our hymn of response this morning is from Voices United number 360, A Woman and a Coin. I know that you're not familiar with this uh, hymn, but the words are very were great. They kind of went with my message this morning. So um, let's stand and sing 360. pandemic, we've not been passing the offering plate, but we have many opportunities to give. There is an offering plate at the back of the sanctuary, and you can look on the church website. There are many different ways of donating. So we give thanks today for gifts and offerings that enable Millwoods to continue to support and care for each other and the community around us. Let's sing, let's, um, sing and do the offering hymn first, What Can I Do? And then after, we'll say our offering prayer together. stand for this. Come on.
God, accept these gifts and with them our lives to be used in your service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's time now to share our joys and concerns. Does anyone have joys or concerns that they would like to share? Yes, uh, my granddaughter had a dental checkup uh, not too long ago, and they, uh, they found a tumor in her jaw. And on Wednesday of this week, uh, she's got to go in and have surgery done. So I'm really hopeful that will turn out. Good morning, everyone. I'd um, just like to thank uh, Anita this morning for um, doing our service. We really appreciate that. And Anita, it's just been great to have you up front. I also have a couple of other concerns shared with me from Mary Dell Hamuluk. Mary Dell is over halfway through her radiation treatments and has a week and a day more to go. And uh, just keep Mary Dell in your thoughts and your prayers for the next little while as she um, goes through the rest of the radiation treatments. My other concern is we have a very, very wonderful friend in our exercise class who um, is waiting for open heart surgery. And she's um, been placed in isolation in the hospital um, with a developing cough of some kind, and it's very worrisome. And if you could keep uh, her in um, your thoughts, we would appreciate that. Thank you. Shall we pray? Loving and merciful God, we come before you today with our hearts full of joy for your presence in our lives, for your love and care. Thank you for the gift of life and family especially today as we celebrate Father's Day. We thank you for the gifts of friends, neighbors, church, and community. Thank you for all our blessings that are, not, that are new every morning. We praise you for all that you have created in this world, but we also mourn that the world is not all that it could be. We are facing challenging times in our world and in our country. We recognize that there are people hurting and struggling. Lord Jesus, Jesus, touch the hurting, heal the wounded, and assure us that we are not alone. You are always with us and will continue with us always. O oh Lord, help us to be instruments of your peace, hope, and love, and help us to be sensitive to the needs of others. Nourish us, renew our strength, calm our anxieties, and help us to be still and know that you are God. And now we name silently in our hearts the people and places that weigh heavily on us this day. Receive our prayer, O Holy One. Help us to know your grace. Help us to do better and bless the people, places, and things that we have offered to you. And now let us close our prayer by singing the, the prayer you taught us.
closing hymn this morning is from More Voices 126, You Are a Shepherd, and I'm not sure if you know this one either, so hopefully you can sing along. They totally do. May God's word be in your heart. May God's word be on your lips. May God's words be in your touch. May God's word direct your feet. On this day and all your days to come, may God's word be the life you live. Amen. <laughs>